My buddy Ben just designed and released a new EDC bit driver, and he's saying it's the best one out there? Yes. It's a big claim. So we're gonna look <laughs> at different drivers, we're gonna look at what makes a good one, and we're gonna find out if the NAFS driver really is the best. I'm gonna put you to task on this. I love it. So let's look, we had a bunch of examples here, because obviously you designed this thing, so you yeah. had a bunch of stuff laying around, right? Like product research. Oh, absolutely. We call well, and I would call this like 10 years of product research. Oh yeah, because right? like, so, you're such a tinker. Even before you were doing yes. this, you were tinkering all the time. Like, I, yeah. I should have brought this on, but I have this little can of screwdrivers from when I was a kid. Yes. Like, you take McDonald's toys apart, and like anything. So yeah. like, I've tinkered my whole life. I wouldn't call myself an expert tinker, but like when I got into knives, I was like, oh, there's a tinker factor to all of this. Oh yeah, big time. And so I went out to Home Depot and bought myself a Husky, like this was like an $8 Torx tool. So you got a T6, you flip it around, you got like a T8, and then it keeps all of the, the other bits in the, the butt of it. So I used this for probably like five or six years, and eventually the bits started to either break or they would strip or they would start to warp. Bend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Warp so that's what I've experienced a lot with different drivers is warping. Like right. unless it's like a Weeha bit, it just warps, right? Yes. So first off, first mistake, it didn't say Milwaukee. But on top uh, of that. Uh, <laughs> we can't all be rich people like you. Right, yeah, okay, okay. This had to have some good qualities. You use it for a long time. So sure. what were some things that you liked about this so drive? I love the cap that the end cap that spins. Got you. I think that's nice. Yeah. The fact that you've got multiple bits in there is great. And it's pen shaped. So I like my stuff to be pen shaped so it can fit in bags and boxes and it doesn't take up a ton of space. Okay. You know how pencils, you can either get a round pencil that will roll mm -hmm. off your desk or you can get like an octagonal pencil yes. that doesn't roll. Yeah. It's octagonal so it doesn't roll. Some of these, they will roll on you. Yeah. They didn't think about that in the design. Yeah, yeah. they didn't think about so, like, oh, it's an uneven surface you might be working yeah. on or whatever, right? Not every workbench is perfectly Correct. level. Actually, most aren't. <laughs> yeah, so, so like yeah. you look at this and then you look at the bit driver I designed, you can see that there are pieces of this design pushed into my design. That said, length is also something that I care about. So from here, I went to like a Benchmade Blue Box that I just keep okay. on my desk. So this is a very popular yeah. tool. So Benchmade Blue Box, if you guys haven't seen it before, it's, it's actually really handy too. Yeah. It's a popular tool for good reason. So yeah. you get an assortment of bits inside, right? I think you get like two of each. There's like T10, T8, and T6, yes. two of each. You open up the box. You can pop the driver out, boom, and then you can put your bits, obviously, in your driver. So right. super compact. Yeah, super easily compact. Easily packable. Yeah, yeah. But you know what I hate about this thing? Like, if you've ever used one of these, you'll be like, I love it. And then you start using it, and like, you're, it's not a center drive. You're like, you're, it's like a cardboard box that you're trying to torque with. Yeah. So like, you're sitting here and all of your torque is going in weird places. Yep. It does not work very well and in terms you, of a screwdriver. Yeah, and if you've ever messed around with your knife much or taken it apart and you're dealing with different, who knows, like thread lockers that were used or oh, whatever, yeah. that's where the Benchmade box starts to fall short, right? Isn't that? And then also, when we're talking about bits, I've warped quite a few bits in I've, the Benchmade I've had box. these ones break on me. Yeah, yeah, like, exactly. Oh, like actually break. Yeah, yeah I think Jamie, break, break or strip out. Yeah, I think Jamie was saying the same thing. Like so, they're not very good bits and that's, I'm not here to like dog no, yeah, it's not. stuff. It's, that's literally like the, I use these okay. probably the most. Here's another, the here's another stupid thing that I'd forgotten. Yeah. It is really hard to get this bit out of here. It is In fact, really, I have is. had, and I'm gonna do this right now, bless my dentist. Oh no, no. I have had to do that before right. to get that bit out of there. Right, yeah, yeah. Because like it just wasn't designed in a way that you can get a grasp on it and get yep. it out of there. So that's the other thing is like, I've used a lot of different tools and I didn't feel like this was one for me, but it has like this compact portability to it that yep. I think is great. Uh, that said, like there are a lot of different options in that realm. Like I think another, so you look at like Weha, they make this one with Boker. And when we're talking Weha, like they are the, we're yeah, talking so about let's, bits. Let's like, talk bits. For yeah, 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 yeah. Because Weha bits, in my mind, like there is no other. Gold standard. Gold standard. Yep. So we put Weha bits in this thing, and that's part of the reason the price is $24.99. That's part of the reason it's expensive is Weha bits are not cheap. So for everybody watching, please remember, Ben is a cheap sucker. I am. And I'm not here to say no, that his tool is the best. What we're doing is looking at tools, yeah. but I would say $25 for this is actually a really fair price. Yeah, I, I think agree. so, personally. Yeah. Like, I mean, this is yours. Well, I'm not well, trying so to sell it for you. But... Let's, let's come back to that in just a second. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, let, yeah. Let's talk about price for a minute, yeah, because yeah. you can buy like one from Kershaw yeah. that's like 12, 13 bucks. Yeah. You've got four millimeter bits on this thing. So there are different bit sizes. Yeah. Uh, they're a quarter inch, which is your bigger size. So let me just, I'll get a shot for you here. There's a quarter inch bit versus a four millimeter bit. The smaller four millimeter bits, you're not gonna be able to torque as much. No. It's just not gonna take as much abuse. Yeah. It's a smaller tool. The nature of it. But 
anything with a four mil with a uh, quarter inch bit, you end up being this size. Yeah. So I need you to pull out your wallet, Zach. Okay. <laughs> and I need you to give me all the money inside. Give me all your money. Never. <laughs> There's no money. <laughs> There's literally no money. I knew this wasn't gonna work. <laughs> so if, if this was your EDC tool of choice from Weha, right? Great little tool. It's got internal. Yeah. Great bits. storage. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Are you going to carry that in your EDC yeah. pouch? Yeah, it's not going in the pouch. It's not going this in isn't going to be comfortable in your pocket. Right. Again, self-containment, super rad. Yes. Weha bits, super important, super rad. Yeah. But I'm with you on that. So let's talk about the bits for just a minute. Yeah. I actually love the way that you can take this thing out. You can see all the bits that you have. Yeah. So if you, we look at like, they make this other one, the bits in here, my, my daughter uh, sucked on this once and all the bits are <laughs> oh, totally <no>. rusty. <laughs> But uh, here we are. This is right. Are you telling me that's little kid spit rust? Yeah, do you want to touch it? That's amazing. No, I do not want to touch it. I love it. So, so here's like another tool from Weha. Yeah. It's got three bits in it. Yeah. This has your pen factor. Yeah. But to see everything that you have inside of this storage. Yeah. You have to dump it out all on the table. And that's that's something that I really like about the Benchmade box yes. and the Weha little screwdriver is yes. that yeah you can see all your bits but you're not managing them. Right? Correct. Because Harbor Freight actually, it's this one, the Kershaw yeah. one. This is probably just a white label thing that Kershaw does. Yep. It's 10 bucks. Like it's a good sure. little tool for 10 sure. bucks, sure. But Harbor Freight has this exact thing, just not Kershaw branded. And they have different micro drivers. So they have yep. like standards, Phillips, Torx, Allens, I think. And I actually have all four of those that go in my box, right? Yes. My toolbox. Yeah. And they're really useful, but I don't use it to work on my knives for the very reason that I've broken two or three bits trying to the bits are loosen knives because the bits aren't good, yes. right? And they're not meant to be under hard use. And the reality is, is when you're dealing with knives, you're dealing with different Loctites you don't know, right? Correct. Like what, you, what you've got. Yeah. So I think that's that's another part of this is like, to me, being able to see what you have yeah. is really important. Which, so, which you have done here with the four bits on the outside. There's now, three bits on the outside. Yeah, three bits on the outside. Now, here's the thing though, what's interesting is I'm seeing a lot more bits in these other kits. So so talk to me a little bit about which sizes you have and why those are the sizes okay. you chose. So we put T6, T8, and a flathead on here. Yeah. So the lander has a T6 yeah. and it has a T8. Yeah. A lot of knives, like I think Emerson's, there's some CRKT M16s that have flatheads on them. Flathead's just nice to have. So yeah. I, I decided on those three. Some people have said, we, you should have put a T10 on it. Some knives have T10s, a lot of Spydercos have T10s, but T6 and T8 by and far wide reaching is the most common yeah. uh, that you're gonna find on knives. So what I did is I stuck these on the outside. And so these are magnetic. To get them out, you just press there. Yeah. And then you've got a magnet there, so you can actually use this without the O-rings on it, Yeah. and it works just fine. So all of your tools are visible. You're like, cool, I need a T6, pull it out, stick it in, Done. use it. And are, uh, they, need it. Are, we, are we talking four mil drive, or are we talking quarter drive? These are four mil, Yeah. and they are four mil because if we were to do a quarter, it wouldn't fit. Right. Like you yeah. can't have it the would, same function pen functionality. It would, it would be chunky like this one is. Correct, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. And then we put the O-rings on there because I like the uh, bearing on the end of it. So this is the first thing, <laughs> yes. like all of us, as we're setting up to shoot this, Jamie included, who's behind the camera right now, yes. all of us just kept grabbing this tool and just spinning, free spinning it, right? Free spinning. Because it's so good. <laughs> it's super fidgety. And so that wasn't like something I designed for, but when the manufacturer came back with the prototypes, yeah. I'm like, Hmm. Yeah. Like it's yeah. just super duper fidgety, and people have really enjoyed that yeah. so far. So hence but, the seat belts on the driver. Yeah. So when you start <laughs> when you start really fidgeting, like I feel like we ought to do this just, okay. just for, for if you're gonna lose them, do we have another one so we don't have to go looking for them? We probably do. Yeah. Okay. okay. We got a, we got another. Oh yeah, so, we got a whole so, other so one right here. Yeah, watch, yeah, watch your head. Watch your head. Yeah, yeah, so you get the, you get this spinning too, yeah. <laughs> and they gone. <laughs> they gone. So that's why there's the seat belts on it. But this whole idea of being able to see your tools on the outside. Yeah. And have them easily accessible without having to dig through the cap or anything that to me like because if you have one tool when you're when you're doing pocket knives you're going to be switching between a t8 and a t6 all the time right. like for the, for instance the lander it's a t8 pivot t6 scale screws yeah and so to swap and, and that's part of it like we came out with a knife with swappable scales so like i can put these on here but like if i'm going to take my whole knife apart i've got to have both of those yeah and so i wanted to be able to see what bits i have 
and just have the ones that I need. And that might be different for different people. You can buy WeHa bits, we sell them on our site. You can buy different WeHa bits for different yeah. applications. Phillips, you can buy flatheads, all sorts of different things. Right, sizes. if you feel like you didn't want the standard that came with the tool, you could get a T10, right? And lock that in. Yeah, 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 yep, yeah. and switch them out. Yeah. So that's kind of conceptually, I looked at these ones that are pen shaped. Yeah. And I'm like, that's what I want. No, I like that. Well, yeah. and that's the thing is, is, is I, I like to tinker on everything but my knives. Hmm. Which is funny thing. Like I actually, I like. I feel like 30% of the time I take apart a knife, I can never get it back together correctly, right? And maybe that's because I'm taking apart the wrong knives or I'm messing with auto yeah. sometimes. Like I took apart a Boker Kalashnikov auto yeah. uh, the other day, couldn't get it back together. Did, did you did you put it in like a, a Ziploc? Yeah, yep. It's in a okay, Ziploc. I, I want to never know, touch it again. I want to know from you guys <laughs> how many knives are in a Ziploc at your house right now in pieces that you couldn't put back together? Because I like literally, I had a bench made reptilian. Yeah in a Ziploc bag for probably like six or eight months. Yeah. As I like mentally thought about, do I really want to go back to that pain again? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I, I think that's just part of it, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like if you're gonna own pocket knives and if you're gonna like customize and repair, like yep. there are tricks on like the Spyderco forums where like to get the end post out of paramilitary twos. Oh yeah. Like how do you get that thing out? And they've like come up with these crazy ways to yep. easily uh, disassemble. Cause it is, it's a bugger to get yeah. that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like even like regular knife maintenance, you're going to have to tighten the screw. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah. just part of it. Yeah, whether you're taking something apart all the way or not, the reality is, is that pivots will get loose over time if, yes. you're, if you're actually using your knife. It's so, gonna happen. So the reality of it is, is like if you're if you're owning pocket knives and you're using your pocket knives, you do need some sort of a good tool. And that's kind of where, like, that's exactly where I end, right? Is yep. like, oh, I just need a tool that'll tighten up a pivot. Cool, the Benchmade box has sure. worked, right? And then recently I got the, the CRKT, yeah. I forget what this one's called, but it's just the brass driver, yeah. right? Super rad, I mean, Talk about fidget, right? Yeah. But you know, when, again, when you're talking about price, right? Like, again, I'm not here to sell so, your tool. You're supposed to be defending it, yeah. but I will say, this is 20 bucks. It's a it's a solid piece of brass. It's really nice. It's really great. It comes with no drivers. No no bits. Yeah. There's or, there's, or sorry, there's no bits. Yeah. It's just a driver. So for 20 bucks and no bits. Correct. But I do have to say that this was really. I mean, I've played around with different different things in the yeah. past and whatever. But I really have been taking apart a lot of knives recently, doing my own research on some stuff. And really, that that twist end be able to lock that bearing yeah. or that cap into your hand and then be able to just turn is really It's a big nice. deal. Like, it's it's a literally going from the blue box, which is the exact opposite end of the spectrum when we're talking about yeah. design, right? Going from the blue box to this, it was a revelation. Yeah. I was like, so, wow, that makes a big so difference. So here's kind of the, the portability versus like the desk repair. Yeah. So Joe Wu, who designed that tool yeah. and this yeah. tool. So this is, this is the $20 version. This yeah. is the $85. Dollar USA made version coming from China yeah, on this one. CRKT import, yeah. Uh, both quarter inch bit drivers. But like his whole philosophy is not necessarily portability, mm. it's like desks. So this is yeah. another one of his products that holds a set of 10 quarter inch drivers, a set of four millimeter drivers, and then you can stick Different. three drivers. So yeah. like if you're doing T6s and T8s and flatheads, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. You've got three drivers, this sits on your desk, you can repair anything and swap it out. And, and I think there's like printable, like you can get like 3D printing. Oh, yeah. And like, I think Nick Shabazz has his own design that you can print, he, he has does. on his desk. Yeah. Um, Cause obviously he does a lot of desk work, right. taking stuff apart. So right? this is amazing yeah. if you're not going anywhere. Right. If you're like trying to lug this thing around to a trade show, yeah. or like you're watching TV and you got this like sitting, like this is <laughs> it's gonna be a struggle. And that's kind of where this comes in for me is it's like, when I need a Torx tool, it's usually on a messy desk. Yeah. It's usually like kitchen counter or whatever, watching a movie. Yeah. Like I find myself wanting it to be portable. Yeah. And so that's something I built into it. Now, this philosophy I think is really great yeah. for people that are using Torx tools all the time and they need it at their desk. And yeah. then I, I, gotta, I gotta give a shout out to the, the quarter inch can become a four millimeter. Oh, cool. Which I think is cool. That's way cool. So yeah, like, yeah. if you wanted that to be a four millimeter, yeah. it could be. Cool. You can't go from a four millimeter back to a quarter. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Work that out in your brain. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but that is um, basically how this stuff works is you, you've essentially, you can go one way, you can't go the other. Uh, but I think you have to ask yourself, do, am I going to travel with this thing? Am I going to put it in something like that? Yeah, because that, that's the reality of it is, is like when we're looking at the tools on the table, right? Like my little alpaca kit here, 
I mean, that, that goes in perfectly, Yes. right? Like it's, it's a perfect way to travel with it. So if you find that you need to tune your stuff regularly or you're traveling a lot, I mean, I do travel a lot. And yeah. so that I have had multiple times where I'm like, man, I wish I had my blue box. <laughs> you yeah, know, you totally. know what I mean? Because I'm not going to travel with this because it doesn't self-contain. Right. It doesn't right? self-contain. So yeah. like you could have a T8 on that. Yeah. But where's your T6? Is it in here? Yeah, like, where, exactly. Where did it yeah, go? Yeah. But you got yeah. everything here. And, and I think that's the thing is, is when you're looking at all these options, and, and I think this is kind of where the culmination of, I think where the culmination of this design comes and when you're talking about portability specifically, right? And when you're looking at all these options, sure, you could go to Kershaw or you could go to, or you go to even Harbor Freight, yep. right? And pick yep. up a $10 little driver, throw some Weeha bits in it, yep. right? Literally, this, boom, this right? one's from the dollar store. Yeah. Four yeah. millimeters, you could get Weha bits and boom. boom. Yep, Rock exactly. Yeah, like, yeah. That's pretty cool. Like you could literally spend like 12 bucks, get a dollar store driver and some Weha bits. I, I'm not gonna vouch for this. I've never actually used it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I picked it up when we were doing research on this. I'm like, how does this work? Cause that's the thing. And I and I, I can't speak for the Kershaw one cause I don't know if this is actually just the white labeled and Harbor Freight and Kershaw have the same. I don't know. But I will say on my Harbor Freight one, I was using the, it was the Phillips head screwdriver and I was kind of torquing pretty hard and it, I felt a slip and I was like, oh, I stripped the screw or I stripped the head. I'd actually stripped out the inside of it. The internal. Yeah, oh, the dang. internal head strip. Dang. And I was like, oh, so now the tool's worthless. <laughs> yeah. And, and again, I, you know. So you, just, get what you, you get I what just, you pay for. I just want to buy another one. Right. Like no big deal, right? Because Harbor Freight is super cheap, right? Yeah. But, right, with something like this and with the Weha bits, right? Like the only time you're replacing something here is if you lost it. <laughs> you right, which, I mean? like, which you could. You could, you totally you know? could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think the other the other consideration for me is length. So we we started carrying these iFixit uh, Torx drivers on our site on NAFs. Yeah. And what I realized is when you work on pocket knives, you kind of want to be really close to the end of that, just because stripping out screws is is almost part of the game. Like oh you gosh. have to know how to finesse a screw out. Yeah. You have to know how to feel for that point, right? Yes. Because. Yeah, when you strip, there's nothing worse than it being like late at night, you're just trying to tune your knife or put a new set of scales on. If you don't have like a lander, just like a normal knife putting scales on and you go and you feel that screw start to strip, it's the worst feeling in the world. Yeah. And Cause you're like, how do I even get this hardware? Yeah. Like I, you can't even find the hardware half the time. So even on the lander, we've had struggles with people who have never taken a knife apart before. We're, we're telling people to take apart a yep. knife. Like, yep. Bless my soul, because holy smokes, we've had people like send in knives, like I strip the screws and I, I will take a good bit, yep. a good bit driver, yep. and I will get the screws out. Yep. And it's like, oh, this is an education piece. But literally, when you drive a screw in uh, or, or pull one out, essentially, you've got to be right up on that. You do. And yep. you've got to apply this sideways pressure. You have to be pushing, yep. You do, yep. this downward into the screw pressure. Yep. And sometimes you'll have to feel it, feel it, and then give it just a, not force it, but you can feel that Loctite breaking and you'll actually, it will snap. Yep. You'll hear that. Yep. And so what I felt like is the length of the tool is also important. And even just like that half inch, mm -hmm. I like to be a little closer up on the tool, yep. on the screw head. Well, and that was something, right? With the with the Benchmade box, it's, it's really hard to have that type of control because you get off kilter yep. and it gets really weird. Um, and again, when I talk, and that one's great when I it. talk revelation, right? Yeah. Like it was short, it has the knurling. And so when we're looking at, at what you've created here, I mean, it's a great little tool, yeah. right? Thanks. But the, well, yeah, cause it is <laughs> like the, the, the extra cool thing about it is, is that it actually holds the bits. Yeah. Right. Cause that's one thing with this that I find myself, I still am reaching for my blue box all the time yes. because I'm like, okay, well I don't have a fancy setup somewhere. Right. Yeah. And so it's like, okay, well this is awesome, but I still have to reach for my Benchmade blue box yeah. because it's just compact, convenient. I can travel with it, all of that. Right. Yeah. And there's so, some other tools out there. We do, we don't have them on the table. There's some titanium yeah. like boxes. I know big eye makes some stuff. Yeah. Big eye design. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They make beautiful stuff to me though. I don't like things in a box. Yeah. Um, I just, I like to be able to use it like a screwdriver. Yeah. Like that to me, like a screwdriver, in fact, hand me that Weha. Yeah. Like it's designed this way for a very particular reason. Yeah. The same way that, the same reason that knives kind of all have a similar shape. Yes. That's because our hands are all kind of similarly the same, right? Yeah. So for a tool to be effective and useful, it's got to fit your hand. Correct. Right? Yeah. 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 So that's, that's kind of where the design came from. And then we also, we do our tool burritos. 
It's designed to fit in there. It's right. designed to go yeah. places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's that's kind of the whole idea behind it. And dang it, the fidget factor is really fun. The, dude, the fidget factor is yeah. so, it doesn't have seatbelts on. Gotta, let, yeah, me, yeah. let me strap in the drivers yeah. here. Well, and, and the other thing you gotta know about this is- This is so good. If you're gonna spin it that way, now you're it's gonna be a little off balance because yeah. one of your bits is not in there. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. So but, it's gonna have a bit of a, a wobble, I guess. Yes. Or something. Yeah, yeah, but, it's uh, so good. It wasn't supposed to be a fidget toy, but um, no. you know. We've well, all been doing it. We're all in here for the fidget <laughs> We're factor. We're all into it. We're here for the fidgets. It's well, great. I have to say that. Have I, I defended myself? I mean, pretty well. Like we really didn't have, like really didn't have, like I literally called up Ben. I says, hey, you got a new driver. Tell me why, you yeah. know what I mean? And so like we really hadn't had this conversation beforehand. And I would say that with the experience that I've had over years of working on knives and just using hand tools in general, sure. right? And then seeing what options are out there. I kind of know, I kind of knew about all these options, sure. right? I have to say, I really do like this. I think that I personally would have put a T10. That, you know, I think that'd be the only thing I would feedback. change. It's, yeah, it's that's really the only thing feedback. that I would change. But I will say that if we're talking about a complete package, right, on everything you're making a uh, concession, right? Yep. With everything it's, it's on the table. It's design trade-offs every yeah, single time. Every, everything, I mean, every knife you buy is a design trade-off. That's yes. why we all have different knives for different design reasons, right? right? Um, and to argue, we like that. Argue. Yeah, the arguing is great too. So, <laughs> so I would say that with what you've created, if the design trade-off that I have to eat is it doesn't have a T10, but I can get one and I can put it in and it's still part of the system and it can still feel really organic. I don't know, dude. Like, it feels yeah. like this, is, this has got, the, this has got the, the most feature with the least amount of trade-off. From and what that, I, from that what was kind of my I know is option. But, right? but I mean, if you're like, I need five tools, well, you're probably gonna want something that you can put them in the end cap. Yeah, exactly. Like, which exactly for my micro drivers, for my Phillips and my standards, yeah. and my Allens, I love that little tool. It's great. Right. It's great for that. But like I said, I literally I used it. Oh man, it had been six years ago on a Shaman, right? Yeah. And I stripped the pivot out on the Shaman, and and the bit itself also tweaked at the same time. And I was like, cool, never doing that again. Yeah. <laughs> It, Lesson learned. <laughs> and that's just it. Like, I, I feel like we, you and I keep talking about this in videos over videos. It's just a matter of like, what are you looking for? What yeah. design trade-offs are you willing to take? Like, if you're looking for portability, that's not your guy. Yeah. yeah Probably yeah. not, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, if you're looking for pen-shaped, well, here's your pen-shaped one. If you're yeah. looking for blue box style where you can see things, like each one of these has a design trade-off. Yeah. I went for the design trade-offs that I felt were most compatible with my personal preferences, yeah. and then I made a heap of them to sell to you guys, <laughs> which is which is a weird thing well, because I'm not just sitting here going, okay, I like this and I like that, yeah, and I'll yeah, complain yeah. about it. I'm like, you actually did something about it. Yeah, and that's a scary thing because it's a it's a capital investment. It's yeah. a it's an idea investment. Like these people might hate it. You might hate it. I think I've talked you into it mostly. I think I like it actually. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. But but that's the cool thing about designing and creating is you get to say this is what I prefer. Here's why I prefer it. Yeah. And then you kind of get to put your money where your mouth is and say like yep. this is the tool I've designed. Here's why I've designed it. Here's why you should buy it. So yep. that like to me it. is really fun and it's scary though. No. Oh man, it's scary. I like it's it. Great. I like it. I really do. And that's the thing again is a guy that uses a lot of tools and is a guy that is scared of working on his knives, right? But I've learned a lot of lessons along the way, like the Weeha bits and this and that. So you say it's something that you like, but the reality of it is, is that like you're a tinker. I'm a right? total tinker. So like yeah. the, the fact of the matter is, is like if you're willing to put your money where your mouth is, right? By like designing something, putting it out to the world, we've seen what you've done with the banter. We've seen sure. what you've done with the lander, right? And sure. I think it's really cool to see some of that come to fruition with a tool like this, where you have all these years of experience, all these years in, in the knife world and tinkering, and then like, here you go, right? Yeah. So like I said, I think if we're looking at design trade-offs, if we're looking at concessions here, that's the only thing for me. Yeah. And you've tinkered with way more knives than I have. Well, so like, you know what I mean? it like, doesn't mean I'm perfect though. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, and it's like, should this have been in steel? It's aluminum, like yeah. it's 6061 aluminum. Yeah, yeah. Should it have been coated in some anodized different color? I don't know, man. Right. <laughs> we're just making this stuff up, right? Well, you know, but, there's there's a quote from, from Ernest Hemingway that I love. And, yeah, and he's oh, talking about, bring in the Hemingway. Oh, dude, you gotta have Papa, you gotta have it. Papa Hemingway. <laughs> So uh, he's talking about film critics, yeah. right? And he's like, film critics are like, the film critics are like uh, generals that stand up on, uh, like on the mesa and watch the battle happen. Yeah. But then they go down in the battlefield and shoot the survivors. <laughs> That's what That's he says amazing. about film critics, right? <laughs> That's amazing. And, and like book critics and all. Yeah. It's pretty good, right? So I again, I love that you're like, okay, I have a problem, I have a problem, I have a problem. Well, here's a solution. Here's a solution. I like that. And it, it yeah. might be that somebody gets one of these and they're like, well, Ben, you, you messed it up. And I'm like, well, Go make your own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and I think that's the beautiful part about this period of manufacturing of creation. Yeah. Like you can go make your own, and it. it I mean, yeah, it's expensive, but it's not like 
It's not like you have to mortgage your house to go and make a bit driver. Yeah, for sure. Like if you have an idea, you can create it. And that is so cool to me. So no, I agree. There's my creation. I love it. Okay, so uh, I am sold. I think I'm you are. I am sold. Yeah, yeah, I really am. That and, one's yours. You can and, have it. Oh, thanks, dude. <laughs> I'm gonna find. I'm gonna find the bit on the ground that you spun yeah, out. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, no. I think this is really great. You know, the funny thing is, is that I never even considered what size bits I was using because having used the blue box so much, all I do is I literally I reach in, I will literally grab a bit, and I'll see if it fits. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that's the one, right? So I don't know how much I actually use a T10, but. What I'm gonna do, I'm if gonna, you're a spider co guy, yeah. you're using T10s all the time. I'm gonna put this in my rotation, okay. right? Try. And then uh, keep you guys updated. But again, looking at the design concessions with the experience I have, I'm digging it, dude. Cool. I think Thanks. it's red. Thanks. Guys, let us know what you think of the new NAFS driver. What's the official name on this thing? It's a bit driver. Yeah. It doesn't, yeah. we didn't give it a fancy name. The, the packaging has like a Saturn V rocket on it. Okay, cool. But I think if you call it like a Saturn V yeah. Dorks driver, like that's a long name. Yeah. So, so let, let us know driver. what you guys think about the S5 uh, bit driver that Ben created. The S5. <laughs> what have I done with my there life? There it is. The S5 bit Love driver. It. And uh, if you would do it differently, let us know what you do. Because I'd love to hear what your guys' feedback is on that. And, uh, I think that's it. Thanks for having me on, man. Yeah, man. It's always fun. I'm stoked to have a new tool. I love it. Okay, catch you on the next one.